Hi, I'm Rich Newbold, Game Director on Jurassic World Evolution 2. I'm here to show you today a closer look at the game, including our realistic dinosaurs, enhanced creativity and deeper management. Jurassic World Evolution 2 is a dinosaur management simulation game that builds upon the success of the first game released in 2018. The game includes new features, content, gameplay mechanics and of course new dinosaurs. I'm Adam Woods and I'm the executive producer working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. We're really looking forward to bringing players an incredible Jurassic World experience. Jurassic World Evolution 2 includes four game modes. In campaign mode, players will experience an original Jurassic story that picks up where Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom left off. They're going to be working alongside iconic characters from the films, voiced by original talent, such as Bryce Dallas Howard and Jeff Goldblum. We have our Chaos Theory mode, where players will be experiencing different what-if scenarios from various films within the franchise. We have our Sandbox mode that allows players to be fully creative and a Challenge mode that will test their part building skills. We now have a variety of locations that the player can experience. Each of these locations have their own unique challenges that the player must face, including their own bespoke weather conditions such as sand and snowstorms. It takes us away from the tropical feeling of Jurassic World Evolution and away from the, the Islands of the Five Deaths and kind of really opens up into more of a Jurassic world. I'm Jim Stimson and I'm lead designer on Jurassic World Evolution 2. We've expanded the range of dinosaurs that we've got in the game now. So while we've got land dinosaurs, we have also included flying and marine reptiles too. We've got more behaviors and interactions uh, between dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2. We've added these in to bring an extra layer of realism and authenticity to our dinosaur behavior. We've been working really hard on improving the hunting and fighting system so they're more dynamic. We have group attacks now, so packs of velociraptors will attack their prey. We've also been adding more depth to their social and environmental behaviours, so they'll now interact with the world around them in a more authentic way. Dinosaur creation and research tasks are now handled by a new staff member, the scientist. They're going to be part of all aspects of dinosaur creation, from the very beginning to the very end. As part of the creation process, the players will be manipulating the dinosaur DNA to increase or decrease the chance of traits appearing when the dinosaur's alive. And one of these traits might be being more resilient to disease. With your scientists, you need to be really careful how you manage them. Each time you assign them a task, they get a little bit of stress. If you don't rest them, then you risk them getting burnt out. And then if they do become burnt out and then you assign them another task, then there is an increased risk of sabotage. We've also added a new territory system. So our dinosaurs will dynamically create this territory depending on the different things in the enclosures that it might need as part of its environmental requirements. Dinosaur territory can overlap as well. With some dinosaurs that's going to be fine because we've got cohabitation, so some dinosaurs are happy to live with others. Sometimes as well, they don't like other species of dinosaurs. And when that happens, dinosaurs can fight and the winner gets to keep the territory uh, and the loser will go and have to rebuild their territory and find the things that it needs elsewhere. We no longer have herbivore feeders in Jurassic World Evolution 2. What we've replaced it with is, is paleobotany. We've reimagined prehistoric plants that the player must utilize to feed their herbivores within their territories. Each dinosaur will want different things, so it allows you to create a bespoke enclosure for your dinosaurs. If it's just one species in there, then, then it's very easy to create that. But if you have two or more, then there becomes more of a, of a puzzle element there to, to creating this, this wonderfully unique enclosure for these, these different dinosaur species to, to live in. We've also introduced new guest interest groups in the parks as well. So the different types of guests will want to see different things in your parks. So we have general, we have adventure, we have nature and luxury. Around the enclosure of a big carnivore, you will have lots of adventure guests. So when you place down uh, an amenity, you can tailor that to be more interesting to your adventure guests. And by doing that, you're going to make more money. Alongside the deeper management that the guest interest groups will bring, the players will have an opportunity to customise the look and feel of these guest buildings. We've got a modular system that will change some of the models on it. You'll be able to change the colour palette so you can make it feel very unique. Within the new environments, players now have a range of natural scenery items and surface textures that they can use to further customise their parks. Alongside the different ways the players can change the appearance of their parks and their environments, we've also been looking in the ways that players can change the appearance of their dinosaurs. What we've added in game is very complementary to the different environments, but as a player, you know, we're going to leave it up to you. You're going to be able to do what you want to do and have the dinosaurs look the way you want them to look. 
Players should be really excited about using all of the different creativity tools and building their own fully realized Dress It world however they want. I'm really excited for the players to get their hands on the new management that we've added into the game. Things like the scientists, the guest types, it really changes how the game plays and I really can't wait to see what they do with it. I really can't wait to see the players' reactions to the new dinosaurs. The new behaviours and interactions, I think, bring the dinosaurs to life better than ever before. We hope you've enjoyed this deeper look into Jurassic World Evolution 2 and we're thrilled to be showing you even more over the next few weeks and months. Hi everyone, this is National Jurassic. So we've all been missing a new species profile this week, however Frontier has made more than up for it with this amazing developer diary, containing lots of new information. New dinosaurs, new behaviors, new info on customization. Let's start with the dinosaurs. This video showed off so much more than I anticipated. No new species but a lot of old favorites that are now confirmed to return. One of the most exciting reveals for me was the Velociraptor. I've been wondering how they'd look in the sequel as their appearance in the first game was somewhat controversial. Unfortunately, it looks like they will reuse the same model. However, the skins look much more vibrant and raptor-like. I will miss the Jurassic Park skins though, and I do hope they make a comeback into the game. This dinosaur looks like a Diplodocus to me, sporting a similar skin to their appearance in the first game. Good to see it return. Lots of Ceratopsians in this video. We've already knew about Triceratops and Nasutoceratops of course, but it looks like Torosaurus and Chasmosaurus will also make a return in the sequel, which makes me very happy as they were probably my favorite non-movie Ceratopsids. Another returning dinosaur is the Coryphosaurus. This of course is a movie dinosaur, so its inclusion was somehow what anticipated. However, it's still good to have it confirmed. I have to say though, I'm not feeling too excited about the skin here. It looks very toyish and I hope this dinosaur will have some of the skins from the first game as well, especially a Jurassic Park 3 inspired one. Pachycephalosaurus also returns and I'm much happier about this new skin. It looks very fitting for this dinosaur in the desert environment as well. Personally, this dinosaur looks much more at home in the desert than it ever did in a tropical landscape. And of course the Rex is back. I absolutely adore the skin. I was a bit apprehensive when the first screenshots were released because I was worried about the shrink wrapping that was going on at the skull. But seeing it now in motion, I'm very excited about it. My favorite dinosaur making a glorious return in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Of course we've also gotten our first aviary footage. I will be honest with you guys, the Pteranodon design from Jurassic World is not my favorite. In fact, I kind of hate it. <laughs> However, this beautifully colored skin makes it a bit better. Still, I'm hoping we will eventually see the Jurassic Park 3 design return, or even the Lost World one. So this screen kind of suggests to me that the Albertosaurus, Camarasaurus and Nigerosaurus will also return. As they still have the Evolution 1 skins, I doubt these are representative of their final appearance. Looks more like a placeholder to me. Now this video also showcased a variety of new behaviors, from idle behaviors like the Zamagosaurus to new fight mechanics. Stegosaurus and Triceratops can now engage in battle, which feels like a dino nerd's dream come true. This fight would never take place in prehistoric times, but in the modern Jurassic world, they are bound to run into each other. Personally, I can't wait to see more. Speaking of more, it looks like the fight animations for the Triceratops have also been expanded. This headbutt doesn't really look like a serious fight, but more like a random animation between them to make them feel more alive. In fact, I think the new roster of animations is really helping with making our dinos feel more like actual living animals. Personally, I think the first game already did a good job with this, but every new animation helps. It also seems like we get to see new environment specific disasters. The sandstorm looks really interesting and I wonder what else is in the game. Probably snowstorms and tornadoes as well, right? We've also got our first glimpse at pack hunting. Finally, our small carnivores can pack hunt. That's been such a requested feature and personally I've gotten pretty sick of those lone takedown animations in the first game. Herbivores will now feed on prehistoric plants, replacing the feeders. That's very nice to hear and will greatly increase the immersion of the game. However, I would have hoped that there would be more prehistoric foliage so we can create our own prehistoric ecosystems. Anyway, this rock looks nice. 
What did you think of the developer diary? Are you excited for the game? For more on Jurassic World Evolution 2, you're already in the right place. Subscribe and like for more content. See you next time.